the eye is arranged uh, as a three-layered structure. Think of it as a globe within a globe within a globe. The outer layer or tunic is called the fibrous tunic and it consists of the sclera and the cornea. The transition area between them is known as the limbus. Attached to the sclera, which is dense connective tissue, uh, we'll find insertions of the six extrinsic muscles of the eye. The uh, sclera, of course, is uh, opaque, but the cornea consists of different types of proteins and it is clear. Going deep into the eye, the next tunic that we're going to uh, find is the uh, vascular tunic. The vascular tunic is almost a complete globe, but it has a space to allow light to pass through, and the space, of course, is the pupil. The majority of uh, the vascular tunic consists of the choroid. As it extends forward, we're going to find now the iris. The iris surrounds the pupil. Now I'm going to open the model up and we'll find some additional structures associated with uh, the vascular tunic. But first, look at the inside of, of the model and notice that we can see another layer. This is the innermost tunic or the nervous tunic and it consists of the retina. On the model it's this tan region. The anterior edge is scalloped and known as the aura serrata. So the aura serrata is the anterior uh, margin of the retina. The retina, of course, is incomplete. Okay, it's a globe, but the, the anterior quarter or so uh, is missing. So from here, the aura serrata back is retina. Now, you can see that there's some red material that is extending forward. This, from my finger forward, all the pink, is part of the vascular tunic. Now, here's the pupil. We're looking at it from the inside. And right now I'm touching the iris from the inside. The remainder of the model from here to here is the ciliary body. The ciliary body consists of muscle, ciliary muscle, which is smooth muscle that uh, is used uh, by the eye to adjust the shape of the lens. Uh, then there are very, very tiny ciliary processes uh, that you can see under a microscope but not in the model. However, extending from the ciliary processes are the zonular fibers or uh, the suspensory ligaments of the lens, which are these white lines on the model. The lens fits in to the model like this, and the fibers attach to the lens. Uh, and then, of course, they're attached to the ciliary processes, which are attached to the muscle. And now the eye has control over the shape of the lens. When the ciliary muscle contracts, the lens rounds, and the uh, eye then is able to see objects that are closer. When the ciliary muscle relaxes, the lens flattens for distance vision.
the iris has two sets of muscles. And the muscle that is adjacent to the pupil is a circular, a smooth muscle. It acts as a sphincter and it reduces the size of the pupil, thus allowing less light to come into the eye when light is very bright. The muscle farther away is arranged uh, in a radial fashion, and when it contracts, the pupil opens, thus allowing more light to come into the eye. If I hold the model like this, we can see the three tunics. The outermost tunic, remember, is the fibrous tunic, and I'm pointing to uh, the sclera, which is part of it. Then the dark line, and uh, coming into a little bit of red right here, is the choroid, which is part of the vascular tunic. The innermost tunic is the tan, which is the retina.